Knoopsy here, and usually on my channel I tend to cover some pretty expensive Android phones, but today let's change it all up a little bit and I'm going to be showing you some much more cheap, budget-friendly Android phones from like $100 to $200. I've also brought along fellow awesome tech YouTuber Linus from TechLine HD, and he makes some really great reviews overall, and he's going to be showing you some of his personal favorites. Without further ado, let's get started. First on the list, and the cheapest, is the Geotel Note. The phone is made of plastic with a removable back cover, and it has a slightly cheap feel, and it's not the best looking device that I've ever seen, but it should do the job and hold up for quite a while, as it does feel pretty solid. The phone has a 5.5 inch display that is only 720p, but regardless, I think it looks pretty decent for a 720p panel with vibrant colors. But besides those colors, it's a pretty weak display, with mediocre viewing angles, and of course, not great sharpness. With the phone's MediaTek processor and 3 gigs of RAM, you're getting some decent performance for general daily usage, but with gaming, you see why this phone has this really cheap price tag. In games like Asphalt 8, there's some serious low frame rates making it almost unplayable with that lag and slowness. So basically, for really non-intensive tasks, it should be pretty much fine. On the upside, battery life with the 3200 mAh battery can give you about a full day of usage in a few hours the next day, especially with that power efficient screen and the large battery size, expect some pretty good overall usage. What I dislike though is the charging port placement at the top of the phone, which I just definitely am not a fan of. The software on this phone is Android 6 with a pleasant stock-like overall look. Icons are mostly good and it looks and feels smooth enough, but don't expect any future updates to Nougat and beyond or really any other support for this phone. And finally, the main 13 megapixel camera is adequate for the price, taking some okay photos outside. Now of course, shots definitely aren't perfect, but for the price, it's kind of hard to complain. In low light though, shots do definitely suffer and video quality is quite mediocre. In summary, for the very cheap, around $80 price tag, it's a good basic phone with a big screen and decent battery life. Now Linus, take it away. Hey, I'm Linus from the Techline HD and I love flagships, but I also love budget phones for their great value. Thank you Kanoopsi for having me on your video. Although the Geotel Note brings a lot of value to the table, the Xiaomi has produced quite a lot of cheap phones that are one of the best in class. I'm talking about the Redmi 4 series. You can choose from a variety of different model options that have slightly different specs and they carry different model names. The Redmi 4, Redmi 4 Prime or Redmi 4X. The prices start at just about 110 bucks. It doesn't matter which model you will choose, you will get an all-metal phone that just feels much more expensive than it is. Also, the Redmi 4 is very compact thanks to the 5-inch 1080p display, which is actually one of the best on any budget phone. The battery life on the Redmi 4 is one of the best in the business. A 4100mAh unit will easily get you 2 days of heavy usage or even 5 days of lighter use, which is a very impressive result. However, you have to check if this phone supports 4G networking in your region. Also, there are some shortcomings like a mediocre low-light camera performance, non-backlit capacitive keys, and the fact that the phone does not ship with a fast charger. But if you add a decent camera, MIUI user interface that is fast and fluid most of the time and has a ton of features, you are looking at a very solid budget smartphone that I can easily recommend. For a larger Xiaomi phone, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X with a 5.5-inch display is quite the upgrade. With a similar high quality metal body to the other Redmi 4 phones, this one looks and feels premium. The 5.5 inch 1080p display has good sharpness and colors, I just wish the capacitive keys were on screen instead of capacitive keys. The fingerprint scanner on the back is fast and this phone actually has an IR blaster which is very hard to find on phones today. Now under the hood you're getting a Snapdragon 625 and 3 gigs of RAM. This processor is power efficient and with that large 4100 mAh battery, expect around 2 days of mixed usage, which is definitely very impressive. And software here is a heavily modified version of Android 6.0.1. From the icon pack to the multitasking menu and a whole lot more, things here are very different. It does look pretty good, but if you want a stock Android experience, this definitely is not it. Last, the 13 megapixel camera is quite impressive. Shots outdoors are vibrant and sharp. Indoor low light shots are all right, but you have to hold really still. 
and video quality is like many other cheap Android phones, meaning it's just not great. The only main negative being is the software may be too extensively customized for some people, but besides that, it's a really solid phone in general. Xiaomi phones are great, but if you prefer stock Android, the Moto G5 or the Moto G5 Plus are definitely worth looking at. For the starting price of about 200 bucks, you're not getting that premium all-metal build like on Xiaomi phones, but the Moto G5 is all about software, performance, and optimization. Even though the phone does not have the best specs out there, it performs great whether you use it just for the basic stuff or play some 3D games. In fact, games like Asphalt 8 run smoothly even on the highest graphics setting, which is a really impressive result considering the fact that the phone has a mid-range level processor. Other cool features include a very capable camera that can take great daylight pictures and shoot great videos, a 2800 mAh battery that will give you at least 5 hours of screen on time, a fast charger included in the retail packaging, a fast and accurate fingerprint scanner, a front firing loudspeaker, and some other cool features that I cover in detail in my full review on my channel. Just like on Xiaomi phones, the Moto G5 still uses a micro USB port, not the USB Type-C. As I mentioned earlier, the phone is well built, but that fake plastic chrome trim just makes the Moto G5 look a little bit cheap. Finally, the phone lacks some essential features like the notification LED light, and while the display is great, the sunlight legibility could be slightly better. Other than that, the Moto G5 is still a very solid phone for the price, and I can recommend it despite a few shortcomings. And now for my absolute favorite phone on this list, and the most expensive on this list, is the Zook Z2. The phone has a glass back and feels solid and very high quality. I actually dropped this phone on concrete and it survived, as it's very well built. There are some battle scars in the corners though. The front has a fingerprint scanner button that is also used for touch gestures, as this phone has no navigation keys whatsoever. You can also turn off all the touch gestures, making it into much more like an iPhone button experience. For specifications, this phone has the most impressive list for the price, with a Snapdragon 820, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage that is very impressive for a sub $200 price tag. The 3500mAh battery will get you a full day of usage, and the performance matches with a super speedy overall experience for daily usage and in gaming too. The phone is on Android 6.0.1 and there are some elements of a near stock Android look, but after a few minutes you'll see that this phone takes a lot of inspiration from iOS. In a lot of ways it's kind of like an Android iPhone for better or for worse. But keeping up with the overall impressiveness of this phone, the 13 megapixel rear camera is definitely amazing for the price. Video quality at 4K is really nice too, except for the kind of weak stabilization, but besides that, it's hard to find a better phone than this at this really great price tag. So in summary, these Android phones are all really great overall value for the relatively cheap overall price tag. Links to the phones mentioned in this video in the description down below, as well as a link to Linus from Techline HD's YouTube channel, and he actually made a part 2 to this video showing some more great budget friendly Android phones. So check it out and do subscribe to him. And that's it pretty much it for this video, like it if you liked it, comment down below your thoughts on your favorite Android phone that's affordable, that's cheap, that's budget friendly, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.